Welcome to Highline BI 348 class video number 18. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, BI 348 chapter 2 start or the finished file, click on the link below the video. Hey, we want to talk about frequency distributions, percent cumulative frequency distribution, and a histogram chart with our percent cumulative frequency line. But unlike last video, where we use the frequency function, we want to use on the data tab the data analysis feature. Now, this is going to be faster and easier, but the values that are spit out are not formulas, so they will not be dynamic. But the thing is, is that it's much faster than the way we created this solution in last video. Now, how do you get data analysis? Well, it comes in all versions. You just have to go to File, Options. And down in Add-ins, you have to come to the bottom, click Go, and make sure that Analysis Tool Pack, spelled with a K, is checked. Click OK, and then instantly that will show up. Now, here's the thing. The histogram feature up in Data Analysis will create this column right here of count, this column of percent frequencies, and a chart that sort of looks like this, but we'll have to fix it. And guess what? The feature Data Analysis Histogram is exactly like the frequency function. That means we're going to give it upper limits, just like we did last video, and it will count and get the same exact frequency and same exact percent cumulative frequency. Now remember, when we give it 15 upper limits, these are the categories that the frequency function and the data analysis histogram feature always use. We give it the first upper limit. It counts everything less than or equal to that. All of the categories in between, the upper limit is included, the lower limit is not. And it creates one last category to catch anything that may be bigger than the last upper limit we give it. Now I'm actually going to copy all of this, Control C, and I'm going to insert a new sheet. Right click the sheet, Insert, or you can use the keyboard Shift F11. And right up here in cell A1, I'm going to Control V. Now I'm going to point to the, the Smart tag and say, please keep column widths. Now I'll use Control and Roll. Now I'm going to go ahead and go up to Data Analysis, and it's the histogram we want. Click OK. The input range, I'm going to go over to Sales Data. Scroll over, and it was the revenue column that we created last video. Control Shift Down Arrow. I can see the range is selected. I'm going to go to Bin Range, and it immediately jumps back to, uh oh, my sheet one. We're going to have to rename that. And the bins, it's the upper limits. We definitely want labels because we're, whoops, I wasn't smart there. I want those. And we definitely want to click Labels because I have labels in both. Those labels will show up in the output. Now I come down here, Output Range, and I'm going to select that text box and say E1. And we want to check Cumulative Percent and Chart Output. Pareto would give us a sorted histogram, which we don't want here. When I click OK, that is amazing. And actually, if you go over and if we go look at these numbers right over here, I'm going to copy them for a second. Come over here, click right there, Control V, and you can see we get exactly the same numbers and percentages. I'm going to Control Z. Now let's come over to Sheet 1. Uh-oh, that's a terrible name. I'm going to double click this and call this. And I call it Data Analysis Histogram Feature Revenue Report and Enter. I'm actually going to highlight these and go to Home and add some wrap text just so we get that. So that is beautiful, but notice these values are hard coded in. And of course, the rule for when to use a feature like this or the frequency function is if you need this report to update when source data changes, you got to use the frequency function. If you don't mind a static answer, then the data analysis histogram feature is great. Now we got to fix this chart. This is just a mess. So I'm going to click on the legend, Control-1, and I'm going to immediately put it at the top. 
I'm going to click on the chart title and delete. Click on the columns, Control-1. It was already the right task pane, but Control-1 will always get you to the right task pane. And we're going to decrease gap width to 0. Go over, and we could use fill. Notice our very color by point is not there, but we will use border. I'm going to say solid line, something like black. Now in last video, we had one example of a chart where we kept the, all the labels, another one where we put all data points. This one, I'm going to leave the frequency, but I want to show the percentages here. Because for a cumulative percent line, it's nice to have those percentages. So I'm going to come up and click the green plus data labels. I want to immediately click on the frequencies at the top. I click once. It highlights them all. I hit Delete. Now we will fix these labels in just a second. In fact, I'm going to drag this out of the way and increase the width here. Click on the labels, Control-1. That moves to the right task pane. I'm going to say maybe, how about above? And that will put them above. Now we'll fix those in a second. But remember, we have chart junk here. We have duplicates. So I'm going to click on this axis. And as we saw last video, if I delete it, it collapses the chart, Control-Z. So I want to do a number formatting to keep the axis but show nothing. So Control-1, and way down at the bottom, under Number Formatting, scroll down. Our trick to show nothing but keep the content is semicolon, semicolon, semicolon. Again, that comes from Custom Number Formatting. There's four sections, positive, negative, zero, and text. By putting the four sections with nothing in it, it will automatically show nothing. So when I click Add, the axis is still there, but there's nothing showing. Now let's tr maybe increase the height. And I want to do something different here. I want to click once and then click twice. And I actually want to try and drag these down. So I want one above and one below. I don't really know a fast way to do this. but. We'll have an end result that looks pretty good. I don't want those leader lines, so I'm going to come over to our task pane. Click on the columns. Remember, you have to kind of click around sometimes in 2013 charts. Label options, and I'm going to uncheck Show Leader Lines. Click and drag. Notice I have one of the labels, so I'm allowed to do something to just one of them. And that's looking pretty good. I'm going to select all of them and come over to Number Formatting. Maybe I want to decrease the decimals by one. So I'm just going to type my Number Formatting 0.0% symbol Add. OK, so we definitely love this output because within just a few clicks, we have all of our calculations. We had to make a few adjustments here. The actual columns represent the frequency. And that follows a typical pattern for retail sales. Most of the transactions are for small amounts. And our percent cumulative line, the meaning is you look at one particular point, 93.8% of the transactions or for $1,200 or less. 70, about 77% of the transactions were for $600 or less. All right, so in this video, we saw how to use the data, data analysis histogram feature to create a frequency distribution, cumulative frequency distribution, and a histogram with a cumulative percent line. All right, next video, we'll actually use the same data set revenue from this video and the last video, but we'll use pivot tables. And we'll actually see for on-the-fly data analysis that the pivot table is the best way to go. All right, we'll see you next video.